Hey there, uh, we have, because this is definitely we, uh, <laughs> we have a very big personal announcement. This isn't actually a chosen announcement. So, Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I know you might be sad, but this is actually really good yeah. news. It's actually really cool. So uh, I want to tell you about our next project. And, well, not even next, our current project. Our like tomorrow, today yes. and tomorrow yes. and the next the project. <laughs> that is actually coming um, in between seasons four and five. I'm going to tell you right now, spoiler alert, The Chosen is not impacted at all. The Chosen is still happening on schedule. Don't worry about that. But something that uh, we have been chasing for 15 years minimum. I mean, more than that, but yeah, that'll, yeah. that'll work. Um, so let's start, uh, before I tell you the project and what we're doing, let's start there because uh, this story is really important and it's really cool. Um, you were where? You go ahead and tell how you how we how the story starts. I when I when our kids were little, I was in Pottery Barn Kids because I was one of those people that would go and just like play in the store. We didn't buy anything, but we would just play in the store. And I saw something I could afford, which was this book sitting. Oh, I've got a big band aid, but um, sitting on the counter at Pottery Barn for, for three bucks. And I had read this as a kid, and and I thought the best Christmas pageant ever. In case they can't see that, best Christmas pageant ever. Yeah. And um, so I grabbed it and took it home and decided we were gonna sit the kids around and we were gonna read this story to our kids. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I remember this. This is really <laughs> funny and it's cute. And there was a TV movie in the 80s that I kind of remembered that was cute, but uh, but yeah. So you said, Dallas, you're the dad? Dallas. Christmas time, you read you it. You read it. And, um, and you did, within you the did first, very poorly. <laughs> yeah, because within chapter one, we were seeing little things that I might even get emotional talking about now, because every time <laughs> we talk about this book, we get emotional. But uh, I started crying, and then I would gather myself, and we'd kind of look at each other like, my goodness, why are we already crying? Yeah. And then we'd get to chapter two, and we would be laughing, because it's so funny, and so charming, and so whimsical, and so well-written. And then we got deeper into the book, and we got to near the end of the book, because it's not that long, and got to the big emotional climax, and I was ugly crying. Ugly crying. I couldn't read. <laughs> and so I handed it to you, and you, you said, I got I was this. like, oh. Grief. I and got then it. you got about two paragraphs and started ugly crying and handed it back to me. And our kids are just looking at us what like, what is happening? Yeah, because yeah, they were really young. And we just wept through the whole rest of the book. And I put it down and I said, I have to make this movie. Yeah, I, I have it to was make that. this movie. It was the first um, time through it. This is the movie that I was born to make. If I can only make one more movie the rest of my life, this is it. And uh, so I went online. I'm doing a deep dive to try to find the rights, what's going on with it. And I saw a little mini announcements. Um, and I, long story short, I ended up finding a couple of the rights holders, the ones who had gotten the rights to the book from the original author, who's no longer with us. And I tracked them down. And one of them happened to be, uh, we, we had mutual, a mutual friend. So we was through the mutual friend. I connected with him and I get to meet with him in a hotel lobby. His name is Jerry Mullen. He's a big time producer. He's produced Steven Spielberg movies. And so I'm a little intimidated, mm -hmm. but I go to him and I say, I heard you have uh, the rights, uh, along with a couple other guys, to the best Christmas pageant ever. Their names are Darren and Chet, by the way. And uh, I said, I have to make this movie. I said, I'm, uh, I, I, I have a huge heart for kids. I'm good with kids. Uh, this mo this book is about uh, kids who are kind of, uh, as the Bible would say, the least of these, as we might say now, others, meaning kids who are on the outskirts. Uh, they're called. The opening uh, sentence of the book is, the Herdmans were the worst kids in the history of the world. And it's about these kids from the wrong side of the tracks who are poor and a uh, single mom and um, just living, they're bullies, they're, they're mean, they're rough, but everyone looks at them, not how God sees them, but how uh, the world would see them t traditionally. And, and they and end up, we should just say, they end up kind of hijacking the, the Christmas local pageant. church's Christmas pageant, which is why it's originally called the worst Christmas pageant ever, but what they do with it and their insights Jesus, into the Jesus through story. their eyes. Um, oh, it makes me cry right now. <laughs> Jesus through their eyes the, of the least of these and, and, and how that ends up impacting the Christmas pageant and the people watching the Christmas pageant. So that is the story. Yeah. And um, it's similar to what the chosen is trying to do actually to take the story of Christmas and the story of Jesus and take it down from stained glass windows and pretty paintings and Mary as this glowing haloed angel holding a precious little baby uh, and, and, and turning it into what it, well, not turning it into, revealing what it actually is. And through the eyes of these kids, they do that. So I'm telling, I'm, 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 talk, I'm talking like we're talking now to Jerry Mullen. I'm like, and I'm good with kids and uh, it's funny and dr dramatic at the same time. I have to do this. And he's like, wow, I really love your passion. Um, 
unfortunately, uh, <laughs> a studio, <laughs> studio only has the rights and uh, they have a director attached. And so he ends up calling his partners and he says, yeah, I'm talking to a guy who I love and he would be a great director. Uh, what is the situation? And they're like, yeah, there's a director already attached and it's with the studio. So what I did was I went home and uh, I just said, no one else can make this movie. If I, if I ever have to watch this movie from someone else, it will kill me. Trust you. Yeah. And um, so I put in my calendar a weekly reminder, just, and it, all it said was pray for pageant. So once a week, it would pop up on my calendar on my phone or my laptop, and I would just stop and I'd say, God, either give me this movie, that's my number one request, <laughs> or if not, change my life in some way so that I can be okay with that, because I can't be okay with it now. Yeah. So every week for years. And um, the rights, uh, every couple of years, I would check up, because the rights typically expire every couple of years at a studio if it's not made. And a couple of years would go by and I would check to see and the movie still hadn't been made. So I would check in with the rights holders. Now, again, at this time, I'm kind of a nobody. Like I, I meaning I've done a couple of movies, but uh, they were all pretty low budget and not studio uh, movies and had varying degrees of success. And these guys didn't really know who I was and they liked me, but they wanted to do a big studio movie, you know? And so, but I kept checking in, kept checking in. And every couple of years I would hound these guys. I would text Darren or call Darren you know, what's going on, what's going on. And he goes, well, the light rights lapsed, but we're gonna renew with this studio. Again, long story short, several more years go by. I end up making the movie, The Resurrection of Gavin Stone, which if you haven't heard of it, that's why um, it failed. <laughs> but uh, if you have, and you remember, you know that it, it, wasn't a, it was a failure, but it was co-produced with the studio that had the rights. And so when I was in a meeting with them, I said, listen, I know you love my movie and I know you wanna make more movies with me. There's one movie I really want to make. It's the best Christmas pageant ever. And they said, oh, cool. Yeah, well, we've got a director. <laughs> and here's what we're doing with the script. And uh, and, we're, and I said, oh, please don't do that with the script because they were changing the story. Changing the script, yep. And, uh, and I was just like, I don't care. Who, if, if I don't make it, please don't ruin it. So uh, again, up every week, pray for pageant, pray for pageant. And every week I would pray for pageant. Mm -hmm. And then um, a couple more years go by. And finally, uh, now, I've done, now I'm starting to do The Chosen. And uh, I remember telling some of my partners on The Chosen, every time I'd meet someone, I'd say, just so you know, uh, obviously I'm not gonna do anything else besides The Chosen for the next seven seasons, except if there's a movie that I can get the rights to called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever, I have to do that. In fact, there are a couple articles over the last 10 years, I even found one online just the other day, uh, where I'm interviewed about other kind of movies I wanna make. And I said, well, the one movie I really wanna make is Best Christmas Pageant Ever, but unfortunately I don't have the rights. So I finally uh, check in with um, Darren again, and uh, he says, um, well, cool, the rights just lapsed. And I'm sending him videos, begging him, you know, and telling him why I should do it. And he said, finally tells me, uh, unfortunately, we've decided to go with another studio. And so, uh, you know, we love your passion, but we really want to do this with someone else. And I went to Amanda and I said, they said no. And uh, I think it's over. And you were crying and I was crying and as often happens in our lives, um, God kind of gave you some some reassurance in some way. What happened when you were, because you were telling me this, you were reminding me, this, me, me of this the other day. Yeah, I mean, we were crying and it, it felt very final and it was, I mean, really, as, long, as far as people were concerned. And I just got this overwhelming sense from the Lord of like, it's on hold, like, just don't worry about it. I've got it on hold. Yeah. I just had this strong sense of like, it's there, but it's under my authority. That's the sense that I got. And yeah. so it stopped my crying. <laughs> and here's what's funny is while she was doing that, I didn't know, I went to the computer and that taunting pray for passion came up. It became up. a taunting thing. And it came up and I went to click it off and delete it. And so that it wouldn't come up again. And I felt this sense of don't do that. Don't click it off. This isn't over. So when she came to me and she said, I think it's not over. And I said, okay, I think it probably is, but I will tell you that I was kind of felt led to not click off that pray for pageant thing. And so I didn't. And so it would kept coming up, kept coming up, and I would pray for pageant. I go, God, if there's anything you can do. And then finally I checked in again a couple years ago. I said, is there anything going on? And he goes, oh, wow, funny. Interesting that you uh, texted me. I just, last week, uh, the, the studio forgot to renew the rights. They're open again. And you know what? My mom recently called me, and she's <laughs> a huge fan part. of it. She's a huge fan of the Chosen, and I said, "Oh, the Chosen, yeah, I know the guy who's like, gotta who love makes the moms, that, yeah, who, who makes that show." And uh, 
he really wants to do Christmas pageant. And she was like, you better do a movie, you know, you better do this with him, it's awesome. And he watched The Chosen and loved it. And he goes, wow, you really could direct this movie. And he and his partners talked. And finally, I remember I said, I came to you and I go, I came to you and I said, they said yes, <laughs> they said yes, we're doing it. We got the rights. Of course, I'm making a show that's really <laughs> no, busy. No, no, how in the gonna, world do we do that? How are we gonna do it? Because yeah. I told him I can do it and I can get the money and I can, uh, and so, over the last couple of years, another long story short. Uh, long story long, I think at this point. Yeah, got the script and we did, did a rewrite and uh, in fact, got some help from Ryan Swanson, who's my co-writer on the oh, chosen. Maybe yeah, we'll we, never work without him. Yeah, but yeah. And we, found, we found a sliver of time to work on the script and then over time uh, got it to where exactly where we wanted it and it's now really, really special. And, uh, and Lionsgate, which is uh, a tremendous studio, along with Kingdom Story Company, which is John Irwin and Kevin Downs, the guys who did I Can Only Imagine, uh, Andy Orn, John and Andy Irwin and Kevin Downs, did I Can Only Imagine, and just did Jesus Revolution, and they have a, a tremendous deal with Lionsgate, a very supportive, collaborative deal, and they said, let's do it through that deal, and Lionsgate, turns out, had some executives who were massive fans of the books, and they hosted me for a uh, Best Christmas pageant Christmas party. party. Christmas and, party uh, in August, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> so we ended up doing uh, a deal. And as I talk to you today, I've had several conversations about casting, and we are going to be filming it in Canada in less than a month, yeah. which is sad that we're not doing it here, but uh, Canada's turning out to be a beautiful place to do it. The crew is amazing. Obviously. And the casting, we're going to making, we'll be making casting announcements soon. I am so excited about the kids that we're finding and the mom that we're choosing, and it is just turning out so beautifully. And the crew and people who are coming on board this project are talking about, oh my gosh, this story is so beautiful special. and the script is yeah. so special. So it's coming out in theaters next year, 2024. It's going to be Lionsgate's holiday release and we have a chance for a new Christmas classic. Well, it's just a special family experience to go with your kids next year and as a family in the movie Because theater. it's not just a kid's movie. It's like no, Christmas it's Story be, yeah. and Elf and Home Alone where the adult, it's just, as, it's so smart and witty. Yeah. And look at this. This is this book is so well-worn because when <laughs> well I was loved. reading it years ago, I was writing notes. There's little notes in here about the movie. Um, and so uh, I am so proud and excited to tell you that we are going to be doing the best Christmas pageant ever, and it's not going to delay The Chosen one bit. The scripts for The Chosen are done, are almost done, but they'll be done Everybody's in time for season working. five. I had a meeting today with my costumer um, and, and production designer, so all the train is still going. We have figured it out till I can do this movie <laughs> in between seasons. Yeah. And so uh, I cannot wait for more. I cannot wait to keep you updated from the set. I cannot wait for you to see it next year. But uh, this is one of the one of the one of the best moments of our career together. Yeah. And um, and I believe it's going to be a life moment for for you because the message of this uh, book and, and, and the script, uh, along with the humor and the whimsy and the, we're kind of doing it as kind of a, a realistic fairy tale. It's just so wonderful, and the message is going to impact you like it has us. And pray for us. Pray for us to have endurance, and pray for the kids that are involved, the people who are involved in this movie, that they would see the story in a new way too. So, so more to come, but uh, thank you for your partnership and your support and your prayers. And uh, and season four of The Chosen, don't worry, is coming soon. <laughs> and, uh, and Christmas pageant coming not long after that. Appreciate you.